Necessity is the mother of innovation, but innovation is the unrelenting drive to break the status quo and develop a new way a few dare to go. Good morning, one and all. I, Mrs. Vidhi Sharma, host of the ceremony of three-day Galgotias InnoFest 2020, welcomes you all for the event. Galgotias University opened its door to world's to first batch of 1,700 undergraduate and postgraduate students in July of 2011. Now, in year 2020, Galgotias has grown to more than 20,000 students. We are the youngest private university to get accredited its courses from NBA and listed in top 150 to 200 universities under NIRF 2020, and also being awarded with E-led certification by QS and is marching towards becoming world-class university. Here at Galgotias, we firmly believe in knowledge and education are not restricted to books. The purpose of education is to enable balanced growth of every dimension and of, of human being, which is not possible without innovation. With this in our hearts, let us begin today's event. Hello. We have with us today a charismatic and an out of, out of the box thinker who is spearheading in the making of the prestigious university as an institute of excellence. The young CEO honored by national and international luminaries for his goal, global educative system. A sports enthusiast who has excelled many sports like swimming and tennis and is passionate about promoting optimum art through various sports club in our university. Mr. Dhruv Galgotia. I now request Honorable CEO, Galgotias University, Mr. Dhruv Galgotias, to kindly share the welcome address. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Vinny. Uh, I welcome all of you to the inauguration of the Galgotias InnoFest, presented by the Institution's Innovative Council. The Galgotias University IIC has been established to promote and facilitate innovative ideas by our brilliant students from various disciplines of sciences, engineering, pharmacy, law, and various other areas of study to help our students to execute their ideas into product, processes, or services for the benefit of the society and the industry as a whole. I believe entrepreneurship forms the backbone of the nation's economy. And in order to strengthen the entrepreneurship ecosystem, Galgotias University has been working to ignite the ideology in students to start their own ventures from their ideas and turn their innovative thoughts and dreams into reality. I believe that the youth of today needs to be more inclined towards creating jobs rather than getting one and to assist them in becoming self-employed and creating employment opportunities. The university has come forward to provide support in every possible manner to see that our students climb the ladder to success and work as a catalyst for entrepreneurship and innovation and see that they become truly Atmanirvan. India is now the third largest ecosystem in terms of tech startups, and it continues to improve its annual global rankings in the ease of doing business, uh, which has been improved from, by 79 positions in the last five years, which itself is an indicator that the impact of such policies is taking effect. I think it is very important to promote entrepreneurship and innovation right from the first year of graduation at all streams and not just at technical programs. I congratulate the IIC uh, of Galgotias University to organize this InnoFest, and I hope this will inspire students and faculties towards innovation and startup. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Please ask yourself, if I weren't afraid today, what would I do? And then go do it. A true epitome of fearlessness who strive for the stars, the tech lady and the sparkling personality 
Professor Dr. Preeti Bajaj, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Galgotia's University. Dr. Bajaj is an electronics engineer who graduated in 1991, post graduated in 1998, and then awarded a doctorate degree in electronics engineering in 2004. She also has been an instrumental in the design and development of ITS systems in public and private sectors like toll collection, toll audit, highway traffic management system, and AITS by applying soft hybrid computing, intelligent system, and applications of fuzzy logic in ITS. She is presently engaged into applications of artificial intelligence in healthcare, precision agriculture, and intelligent transportation. She is presently Vice Chair Branding, IEEE India Council, Member MGA Awards and Recognition Committee, and Founder Chair of Nagpur Subsection, and also on BOG of IEEE HKL. She is the Founder General Chair of ICTET series of eight IEEE conferences, and she has vast experience in handling autonomous institutions, NBA Taiwan, NAC. She has been recognized as a resource person by National Board of Accreditation for creating awareness of outcome-based education system and also is an ex-member of General Council of NBA. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sparing the time for us. Ma'am, I request you to kindly share your words of wisdom with our participants. Uh, Ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. Honorable Chancellor, sir, uh, in his absence, uh, CEO, Mr. Dhru, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Venkatesh, Deans of the University, the IIC coordinator, Mr. Ravi, and the freshman students. Very good morning. On behalf of Galgotia's University, I welcome you once again to the, this InnoFest, the first of its kind to ignite the minds of our freshman students who have just joined the university a month back. Galgotia's university, the credentials are known to you and that's what you have taken admission. But dear students, there is all, I always say that you need to keep your antennas open. What's that? The innovation, which means out of box thinking. It means you need to find out the problems, problems in every domain. And then if problems are there, there would be opportunities. If opportunities are there, there it means you have solutions. And if solutions are there, you need to come out with the out of box thinking and give the best so that the solution becomes the best where you can contribute and have the out-of-box thinking. It could be in the design. It could be in the technology. It could be a thought. It could be an idea. It could be in writing. It could be in scripting. It could be in the direction. And it starts from anything to everything. What do you mean by innovation? Is it? What is the difference between innovation and research. Can every research be an innovation or every innovation be a research? Does it require a formal setup, a lab, or you can do it anywhere, sitting at your desktop? And to that extent, being in the class anywhere. So I just wanted to appeal each one of you Learning is one part. You may have 20, 30, 40 subjects. But with that 20, 30, 40 subjects, can you learn 
to apply those subjects and even to to broaden you your thought process to come out with some solutions that yes this is the learning but then you are applying that knowledge in a innovative way and it do not have any boundary it starts from a young child of any age till a old man with 70 80 or 90s everyone can contribute to the wonderful world of innovation this innofaced i congratulate the team of iic and mr ravi to taking up this initiative to ignite the minds young minds taking them to a word in, introducing them a word of innovation we all have seen in this epidemic wonderful innovations coming up in healthcare wonderful innovations coming up for technology for learning let's extend that let's come out with many many innovations and contribute to the university contribute to this so you know society wherein we live and make it a better place coming to entrepreneurship coming to to innovations it would be you know a a step beyond innovation i would say you once you are having innovative thought extend it make it your bread and butter as our ceo has said so so india requires the job givers you know not the job seekers atmanirbhar bharat which is again a theme for today we are going to see how you can be part of that right from day one frugal innovation grassroots innovation social enterprises social innovations lot of words you must be looking at and then understand what's meaning of that how you can connect with what is your passion what you like it initially probably you have to be you know you have to understand you have to know the success stories and that's what the the best of best we try to invite them to ignite your minds so uh, a good friend of mine the ex chair of uh, of ipali bangalore section mr sudindra kaushik chief innovator and co-founder of prasu he is here to have a dialogue with all of you we also have in today's session mr shrinivas chamarthi md of siva uh, sai and both i welcome both of you to give your consent to spare your precious time and uh, be ready for igniting you know and mentoring our students thank you so much for joining us and with this we will be discussing more on what can be and how first year students can be in, you know contribute to the innovation for that the uh, if i talk about uh, the technology do, uh, driven uh, you know innovation because as on today the world is going digital doesn't matter you are a science student doesn't matter you are a student of liberal education you are a business student but you need to know little knowledge about technology which takes your uh, uh, thoughts to the you know you, you will able to communicate your thoughts digitally to the whole world and for that we tried to introduce artificial intelligence uh, data science some of the courses which are which, which will connect you with the technologies like uh, maybe industry 4.0 that all these disruptive technologies are part of your curriculum doesn't matter which program you are and same is you know right from engineering to liberal education to agricultural to medical science as well so with this so we try to have that once you know these technologies which are uh, which are being uh, you know um, right now in practice then you will able to take up your thought your your uh, thought to the reality with this i once again congratulate everyone and appeal all the students to take full advantage of these three days in o face join each and every session and you will be learning new ideas you will be connected with the world and have your network very strong 
connect to the people i mean you are uh, tech savvy you are on social media as well spend some time to network the people who who can be your mentor and who can um, uh, catalyze your thoughts of you know uh, the the thoughts and ideas which you have on your uh, uh, goals your uh, uh, your vision and they, they they will mentor you they will uh, sharpen your ideas and i'm sure we will have maximum entrepreneurs in this batch thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this i'm very happy to uh, welcome everyone to this and uh, part of this innopaste thank you thank you so much ma'am it was in heartwarming deliverance we are honored to have you here with us and supporting our endeavors in the future thank you so much next we have with us dr r venkatesh babu He is currently the Pro Vice Chancellor of Golgotha's University and has over more than 23 years of experience in teaching and research. Sir is a graduate in mechanical engineering and done his doctorate in the field of IC engines. He has also served as an assistant director in AICTE and NBA under Ministry of Education, Government of India. He was also a core member of NBA Secretariat. when india became a full signatory of prestigious washington accord he has been instrumental in partnering with leading international organization and has been a invited speaker on various national and international platforms he is a member of american society of mechanical engineers so thank you for joining us today i request you to kindly address our participants uh, thank you madam thank you for the kind words so uh, respected chancellor dr sunil galgotia algodia university respected ceo sir mr dhruv galgotia respected vice chancellor madam preeti bajaj and uh, all the participants here a very warm welcome to the institutions innovation council of galgotia universities first of its kind galgotias innofest galgotia university has always been on the forefront of introducing new things that is one of the reasons why students are choosing the programs that are offered by us we are one of the most sought after institutions when it comes to the northern india to northern india being a private university that to a very young university this events like this are a feather in the cap as our ceo was sir rightly pointed out here we are making our best of the efforts to ensure that the students who are joining galgotias university are offered the best in everything be it teaching learning process be it the student support services be it the state of the art infrastructure everywhere we ensure that no stone is left unturned so that students get the best of the opportunities to get into the best of the areas having said that born or the days when people were looking for jobs nowadays everyone can become an entrepreneur a solid step towards achieving this goal is establishing this institutions innovation council and a very good initiative is this innofest so i welcome you all for this mega event and my sincere thanks to today's panelists mr sudhendra kaushik and mr giving education it's not giving education to a student does not mean that we are educating only one person it means that we are educating the next generation so along those lines i wish you all a grand success and my dear first year students a very warm welcome to galgotias and i am sure that this valuable decision this right decision that you took to join galgotias university is going to be a wonderful and path breaking one and it will take you to places i wish you all a very bright and colorful future thank you all thank you Thank you so much, sir, for those kind words and welcoming words for us. Next, we have with us today, Mr. Ravi Kumar Tiwari. Sir is mentor of innovation and entrepreneurship cell, Kolkata University. He is also a startup mentor and an incubator incubator consultant. It's his efforts of meticulous planning and overall supervision which has made this event a reality today. Thank you so much, sir. 
Mr. Tiwari is having a six years of professional experience. He is an ex-TDI coordinator and entrepreneurship in charge, catering ecosystem of entrepreneurship. He has mentored more than 20 early stage and student startups and is presently mentoring six startups. I request you, sir, to kindly brief our participants about the InfoFest. Thank you so much, Vinny, ma'am. Uh, first of all, let me tell you what this Galgotia's InnoFest is. So it's nothing but an innovation festival. So we are following, we have joined the uh, Ministry of Education Institution Innovation Council. And under that, we have under our uh, own Galgotia's University IIC, we are doing all these sessions. So let me brief you what we are going to have in next three days and in today's session. So in today's session, we are going to have the session on creativity, critical thinking, and innovation by Mr. Sujnir Kaushik, sir. Then next, followed by Sujnir, sir, we are going to have a session on rural innovation that is going to be conducted by Mr. Srinivas Amarthi. After that, we are going to have a very important top, uh, panel discussion, very important topic that is the Atma Nirbhar Bharat. That's the mission that has been called by our Honorable uh, Narendra, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. On day two, we are going to have a panel discussion on national education policy, a national education policy from the perspective of innovation and entrepreneurship. For that, we are going to have the panelist as Mr. Ashish Jain, CEO of JSS Incubator. Then we are going to have the panelist Sharvari Kulagarni, who is the uh, founder of Makeshift, a uh, tech startup. Then we are going to have our own CEO, Mr. Dhruva Gutiyas, entrepreneur and CEO of the university. Then Dr. Preeti Bajra, the vice chancellor of the university. And we are also going to have a NESCOM representation, that is Mr. M. Ramkumar, who is lead, leading the NESCOM's 10,000 startup initiative. Following that, uh, on the day two, we are going to have a workshop problem solving and startup canvas nine steps to so startup success that is going to be conducted by Mr. Saurabh Jain, who is the vice president Paytm, at Paytm. On the day three, again, we are going to have a very important initiative of Ministry of Education's innovation, innovation cell. That is orientation session on national innovation and startup policy. Following that, on the last session, we are going to launch the Galgotia's innovation contest, and we are going to have an orientation session about that contest. So this is what the overall uh, schedule of Galgotia's innovation. I look forward active participation from all the students, faculties, and those who are joining from the uh, outside of the Galgotia's university. Thank you so much. Look forward to it. Thank you so much, sir, for briefing the event for our first year students and other participants. Dear participants, we are honored to have with us today, Dr. Sudendra Kaushik, Chief Innovator and Co-Founder of Prasu, also a speaker at TEDx BMSCE, for our chief guest of the event. Sir, we are graciously welcoming you at our university and for accepting our invitation, we have, show, we have uh, with us the heartfelt gratitude. Dr. Kaushik is a practitioner with 24 years of international multi-domain experience. He has to his credit more than 18 national and international patents and have received various prestigious awards such as Karnataka State Innovation Council Award, HCL, Excellence Award for Patents India Design Mark Award, Ms. Sri M. Vishweshwara Engineer Award. Sir has also been an invited speaker at various international platforms such as MIT Emerging Technology Conference, IIEX Europe 2017, IEEE, IIT Madras, IIT Gandhinagar, Triple IT Bombay, Innovation Center, and CII. It's an honor to have you, sir, with us today. I request Dr. Kaushik to kindly address our participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vinny Sharma. Uh, I would like to also to thank uh, Mr. Dhruv, Dhru, a CEO of Galgotias, uh, my colleague and good friend, Dr. Preeti. Um, 
it was nice to hear you dr venkatesh and of course mr ravi uh, also another good friend uh, um, that i have earned uh, so when i got this request from ravi it was a very uh, crazy schedule that i had to tinker but i told ravi we will find a way so then he said that's the a uh, better way to make it happen sir we'll make it so here we are today and i'm very glad to be here it was very inspiring to hear mr drews and uh, and uh, dr preeti and dr venkatesh comments because what ravi has planned over the next 3 days is something i wish i had when i was uh, joining my college but it's it's not there but you guys have it so make the best use of it so i'll share some things which i have learned hopefully it is useful to you and uh, yeah uh, which we can discuss as we go on so if just anybody let me know if you can uh, see my screen yes sir we are able to see your screen excellent okay let me start so uh, thanks for the nice and uh, warm introduction uh, this is a very interesting topic for me it's a very nice uh, um, event that you have so my congratulations to you and then when i know uh, dr preeti and the uh, ravi are involved i can assure you that you will have a good event and nothing less than that um so i work a lot with industry uh, academy and startups in innovation i'm giving you the context of what i'm going to share because it's very important to understand that what i'm going to share is coming from these experiences of me working in in, in europe in india in singapore here and i sit in a lot of academic councils of universities and industry interaction cells advising them on innovation sit on several startups and incubation centers and mentor startups recently on the national center for biological sciences so there's a lot of thing that gets coming out of these discussions which i'm going to share and this is not limited to some kind of company there are some companies i work with where the issues are similar there are some other kind of institutes where i work with which are very similar so it is basically the result of the 200 plus workshops and sessions that we have that i'm going to share you about so if you observe the topic that was given by ravi to me uh, there is a there is a reason for that if you look at the top skills which world economic forum has put out a couple of years ago and again now just notice on the left side uh, on the 2020 column the number 1 2 and 3 that's exactly what ravi has picked right so the 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 focus for for the future of any engineer has to be these three skills that are going to help them um if you look at the recent study done done by the world economic forum again they called it the the jobs reset again very similar things look at the number one skill analytical thinking and innovation right so critical thinking number four complex problem solving number so it is just always consistently coming out that this is the future of somebody who's going to be successful whatever may be the field on a lighter note i say don't make everybody an entrepreneur because then there will be nobody to work for them right so but there are different kinds of people and we'll talk about that as well so the three skills if you summarize is complex problem solving critical thinking and creativity so the three c's together these three combined is what will give you innovation so why is it complex problem solving why is it not just called problem solving right that's one way of critical thinking as well by the way today if you see uh, any product just take a product like a mobile phone or a ct scanner or a car those of you perhaps newcomers in this uh, today's session may not have uh, uh, familiarity with something called an ambassador it was a car purely mechanical car today just try to find one purely mechanical car or even a scooter or even a, a honda activa no it doesn't exist because different technologies have already been integrated every technology is in every product that people are looking at and then lot of domain diffusion that whatever branch you are studying that is not enough for you to solve problems you need to know the other domains the other branches that you are in if you are in computer science know about electronics know about mechanical know about civil and so on So it's a very complex world because different technologies are integrated, and that's why creativity and uh, critical thinking are necessary, which we'll come to in a minute. So let's start with the simplest way to understand innovation: um, new, something new, doing something new, and something useful. That's the simplest way I have realized to explain innovation and uh, in a reasonable way. So doing something new, only new, is pretty easy. All of us can do all the time, and we do it. but doing something new which is useful is not and that's where today's discussion and the role of iic and the role of uh, people like ravi and and dr preeti comes in that how are we helping you 
in making something new and useful. Okay. Dr. Preeti talked about research and, and innovation. Let me uh, give my view. And Dr. Nicholson from 3M has helped us how to understand this, right? So it, it goes like this. Uh, um, research converts money into knowledge. So you get funded for a project, you get money from DST, you get money for a, you know, a, a research idea, etc. So you put in money, you take out knowledge. Innovation on the other hand, just does the opposite. It uses knowledge and converts into money. So what does it mean? Let me give an example. When you pass a current through a thin filament, the filament gets uh, heated up and it starts to glow emitting light. That is new knowledge. Somebody spent time and money doing that experiment and realizing that, hey, this is one way to produce light, new knowledge. Now, Edison took that knowledge and made it into a bulb, which became a huge product innovation for people to buy. So the whole idea is innovation has to use certain amount of knowledge that is there or create that knowledge that is not there. Hence, in the process, talk about how you can make use of knowledge to create products. Okay. So the whole idea is remember that you cannot make a startup out of research. You can make a startup out of an innovation for which you would need research as well. So how does it connect to business? How does it connect to, uh, uh, let's say, um, a startup and, and uh, innovation culture? So research, like I said, creates uh, knowledge. Innovation creates money out of that knowledge, right? Businesses through startups scales that. If you see the bag of money, it has grown. Why should it grow? Of course, that's how you sustain business. That's how you make new products because a part of that money comes back to research. So please understand it's a closed loop and you cannot, research cannot do without innovation and business. Innovation cannot do without research and business. Business cannot do without, without research and innovation as well. So everybody needs the other two. And this is a closed loop system. And as electronics engineers, we all would realize that it will be a more stable system. And that's how in reality, companies put 4%, 5%, 10% of their annual sales into research and innovation, depending on how much they can afford to. So understand that this connection is existing. So how do you actually use innovation? Any innovation will rise to a new, give rise to a new product or a new service or something which most people don't realize is a patent. Patent is something you neither you make it a product, neither you make it a service, but you license it to somebody who would like to make a product or service out of it, right? So that's how you make a benefit out of your innovation. And that's how you can look at the possibilities of innovation. Now, I'll show you a couple of videos just for you to have a look and understanding of what it means, okay? product has a certain value in certain places for certain people. So though it is $25, there are people who are actually buying this product because it has a value for them, right? Let me take to, to another one. New is not innovation, I said. I thought I'd me make a shirt with one sleeve. And to my horror, I found actually it exists. There is somebody who's making a shirt with one sleeve. I don't know who is buying, how much they're selling, but apparently it exists. So same way, being different is also not innovation. Look at the picture and I will know what I mean. A lot of people mistake creativity being different as innovation. No, they are not. Just because it's different, it's not necessarily useful. Remember, it has to be useful. Look at this and now talk about useful after we have seen this video. So the button up color stay is a dual purpose color stay with a button hook on one end. This helps to fasten the small frustrating buttons on your dress shirts. Also stores up in your collar to keep it sharp, keep it from curling. So you can go to that first troublesome button, probably gonna be on your cuff. You're gonna hook it with the button up color stays. You use the tip to guide and draw the two pieces of material together. You push it through and you give it a little spin and it pops the button right through. Next one could be this top button of your dress shirt. So you can hook the button up to the button. You can use the tip to guide and draw the two pieces of material together. And you can just pop through, give it a little spin. You just button your own button with no frustration, no asking for help. You store it back up in your dress shirt color to keep it looking sharp and close to hand for the rest of the day. So this is a guy who is so confident of his product, which is to just put buttons. So I'm 
announcement, sure. If you were in a physical mode, I would have checked that too, that people who are in this call would not like to have this product, right? So because none of us feel a need for it. And that's where I think you need to understand that there are a lot of things that you can do, but a lot of things need not be useful as such. So this is another thing which I found very funny. You can do many things, right? This is purely gold. So this is a, a <laughs> so I always say use the, the Nike theory in its opposite way. Don't just do it. Just because you can do it, don't do it because then it'll end up in a museum like this, right? So the idea is if you have any product, let's take a newer, uh, more uh, product that you might be closer to. I have interviewed many people who had this product and there are not many people who have this product. This is a geezer with a remote control. Nine out of 10 of them, 87% of them, told me that one, they don't know where the remote is and they never used after the first two days. This, this remote costs extra. It is a possibility to add remote to everything today, but is it useful? So that's the whole question that you need to ask. Let us look at this, this uh, product. This is a real product of which came out somewhere around March last year. Um, what is this product? This is a cardboard, which is folded in a certain way so that you, know, you can carry two pizzas and a soda bottle and some uh, sauce and napkins, right? The whole idea is, what would be the value for this product? There is no artificial intelligence. There is no, no IoT. There is no uh, VLSI. There is no computer science. There is no image processing. There is nothing. Just a piece of cardboard folded in a certain way. Companies who want to sell pizzas are not allowed to use plastic and you know are uh, you know, required to use uh, recycled material, but the customers should still be happy to carry the food, etc, etc, etc. So they have their own problems. This person asked for one and a half million dollars non mutually uh, exclusive deal. That means he can sell it to as, as many people as he wants. This is the value that somebody would pay for a solution that is useful to them. It is not just a bag because they have to use a certain kind of recyclable material, easy to carry, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's very important for you to understand that value can come from anywhere and it need not be complex. Like Dr. Preeti said, it can come literally from any part of our life as long as we understand what is the value that we are proposing. We'll talk about a little bit more as we go on. So remember in innovation, there is nothing called right or wrong. There is nothing called right or wrong. It's all about being useful. If a product sells, that is a success. If your product doesn't sell, it is not, that's it. There is nothing else that you can think, oh, technically it's a one, wonderful product, it doesn't matter, right? In the end, it should be useful. But is it easy to do this then? No, it is not easy to do. Uh, so an IBM study of uh, startups in Bangalore, like I said, I'm very closely working with the startup ecosystems, 95% of the startups fail. That means only 5% of the startups actually make it to the third year, right? I think, uh, yeah. So the whole idea is the, the concept of startups is to make things work. And I, I think, Ideally, it should be the other way around. So I think the, the whole idea of 95% of the startups should work, should be what we should aim for. Why? Why does these startups uh, fail then? So if you look at the, the number one reason, I think somebody is, is drawing stuff. Can you disable these things, please? Yes, sir, we have disabled, sir. Thank you. So the number one reason startups fail is that they are building something nobody wants. That means that nobody is finding a use for those products which people are in these startups are building. I'll tell you, these startups are run by people who are very smart. They have 10, 20, 25 years experience, masters, PhDs. I have met them. The point is they are not stupid people, but they're building some, something which nobody wants. That means they're not finding the usefulness of their product. I think that makes a whole difference for someone. And of course, they lack focus and asking for help, etc. But remember, the loss is from converting an innovation into a business. A filament getting hot with light is not enough to make a business out of it. People cannot hold wire in their hand and walk around for light, right? So business means that there is a 
conversion loss before you make something useful for people. So value is the one which makes it useful for people. Let's understand how it works. Let's say you and me go to a supermarket, okay? You are the customer and it's very easy when you are a customer, by the way. You go to and you see a lot of products from a lot of companies, shampoos, toothpaste, toothbrush, juices, biscuits, whatever. I made a quick survey the other day that on a big market, I found 28 kinds of toothpaste, for example. I'm not going to buy toothpaste and try all the 28 toothpaste, even if I use one a month, I need more than two years. I will buy a toothpaste based on what I like. I don't buy a toothpaste because Ravi has made it. I don't buy a toothpaste because company X has made it, right? So what do I buy a toothpaste? But how do I buy that is when I give money. So I take out money, you and me take out money as a customer. What do we get is not toothpaste, we get value. Please, please remember, we don't sell products, we don't sell services. We sell value through those products and through those services, right? I think the key there is to understand that the value offered by the company should also be the value that is sought by the consumer because that's where they meet together and that's what is called what's in it for me. What's in it for me for the company is why am I making this product? What's in it for me is why I am uh, buying this product. So this is where uh, the value comes becomes a little bit subjective. Subjective means it can be interpreted in many ways. A particular situation can be interpreted in many ways. And this video tells exactly that. So the guy who walked away is a startup guy. He thinks he has solved a problem. The guy on the screen is a customer who has a problem that he didn't have five minutes ago. So all because we understood the situation differently than actually it is. So I think the whole idea for people and startup and innovators is to understand exactly how we have to make sense of a situation. So going forward, technically you have a lot of things to learn, but contextual awareness, building contextual awareness is actually the new intelligence. That is how you will differentiate yourself when you get out of college, when you're in college, when you're done with your college, when you're working, when you are, you know, uh, experienced and so on. Understand the situation appropriately is very, very important to create value. So that's where it all comes to. How do you interpret? Let me share my own uh, experience, uh, which I always share. I, I was working as vice president innovation. I was asked to make an innovative product for my home, home appliance and especially for kitchen. I was not sure what could we do for kitchen. But then this idea came that, you know, as an engineer, I gained the engineer. So my PhD in innovation, but my base is still engineering. So I said, okay, let's use IoT and make an induction cooktop. So what does it do? Oh, it operates using a mobile phone, okay? So I did the prototype with a couple of people and then we did, uh, got it all running, built an app for it, everything. Then took it home to show it to my mother. So my mother, I, I remember this extremely well, like a photographic memory. I put it on the dining table. She was to my right side. The plug was on the left side. So I connected the induction cooktop, took out my mobile phone, very cool, you know, open, pressed a few things. My mother was waiting patiently because I'm her son. Then I did a few things. I launched something. Then I pressed something on an app. Finally, I pressed something on it and the induction cooktop switched down. Okay. I was delighted. I pressed something on my phone and the induction cooktop switched on. So I looked at my mother with a lot of pride and, and uh, I said, look, I can switch it on uh, using my phone. She said, so what? I said, why would you do that? He said, what do you mean? Why would you do that? You're standing in front of it. You can switch it on by yourself. Why do you take five minutes to switch it on? So the whole idea is, I was like shocked to death that a VP innovation is blasted by a, a, an eight standard mom. But I was not going to give up. I was going to travel the next day. So I told her, uh, you know, I'm going to, I was going to China. So I told the mom, I'm going to China. So I can switch on from there. She said, why would you do that? I said, what do you mean? So tomorrow, if you're in China, let's assume I have this device and then I have to put rice here and make an ISD call, international call to tell you, son, the rice is on a thing. Please switch it on. And then when it is done, I have to call the same thing. So it doesn't make sense. So she basically was telling me there is no usefulness to your innovation. Okay. 
maybe it's technologically satisfying to you as an engineer, but it's zero value. In other words, I will not buy it. That's where it counts. Startups have to convert into business. Innovation has to convert into business. Contrarily, we all have this example, maybe uh, the, the, the younger ones may not have it directly experienced, but probably the mothers of the house, the women of the house, put the pressure cooker on the stove and say, I'm going out, I'm going to take bath, etc. Please switch off after three whistles. And if you're watching TV, if you're doing your own stuff, you'll never know when the three went. Whether you not even know that it was the first one or the tenth one until you open and find the food all charred. So to solve that problem, we did another innovation. This, what you're seeing on the picture is such a one which is available in the market already for four years. I'm not selling that, I'm just saying that. So if you set the number of whistles in this induction cooktop, and we have given option from one to 15. So I can set any number. And if it is the, the, the pressure cooker, and if you set this for five, after five whistles, the induction cooktop will count five whistles and then switch off by itself. When I showed this to my mom, she said, I want to have it. That's utility for you. That's usefulness for you. So, so the whole idea is it's very easy to make something new but it's not so easy to make something. That's why I'm talking about context. Understand how people live and work with problems, okay? So to succeed at innovation, you need a couple of things. Just what I said from my mother's discussion, why and so what. I have used this in life sciences in all kinds of startups. These two always and always work. Why are you doing what you're doing? So what happens when you're done? Let me give an example. There was a student uh, after a university discussion like this, who came up to me, uh, um, he said, sir, I want to uh, discuss an idea with you. I said, what is the problem? After 10 minutes, he couldn't tell me the problem. So he said, sir, it is an app to find caterers. So what? No, they can find caterers. So what happens? Yeah, but people need caterers. Okay, but why would they need an app? So the whole idea is when you look at the why and so out of any problem, you will know for sure whether you have a good convincing problem at hand. Like I said, you will never get out of this, but it will help you build the contextual awareness, which is actually the differentiator between success and, uh, and not. So creative problem solving, the Nobel Prize winner has said, is looking at the same thing as everyone else and thinking something different. I think today Google gives you the same amount of uh, information, whether you are uh, uh, Googling from my machine or your machine, right? So the whole idea is that when you key in a certain keywords, information, is the same to everyone. So the whole point of having information is over. You need to have, uh, I think somebody's. Uh, the whole idea is information is not an advantage anymore. Your viewpoint, which is your context, is the more relevant point uh, going forward. So you need to build that. So if you see the yin yang of innovation, you have, you know, um, critical thing on one side, the why, 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 why part of it. Analyze, 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 and you know, go to the bottom of situations and understand the root. And then on the other side is, how do you solve it very differently? So when you have a problem, you can solve it very differently. You can either overcome it or you can reduce the problem, right? Sometimes you can do both. Sometimes you cannot do uh, everything that you want to. So which comes first? Typically, when, like I said, most of the startups which fail have a problem in this, uh, the, the, the problem is depicted in this picture. There are two, two bulbs which are both are happy, but one has a question mark and still happy. One has a you know, light around it and happy, that can be understood. So the whole point is, when you start your innovation journey, you always start on the left side, which is not the idea on the right side, but is on the problem on the left side. Having starting from an idea is a, is a guaranteed way to failure. Okay, It is like, imagine like this. I'm coming up with a medicine first, and then I'm going to find a disease for it. Think about it. It is as ridiculous as that. So it should always come up with a problem first. So it is not that we cannot find a solution. I told you all these startup guys are very smart people, very accomplished and experienced people because it is about the problem. It is that they cannot see the problem. And that's where I and you can make a huge difference that if you start with the problem, you're always bound to have a good success. How do you find problems? Take any situation currently that exists, find the gaps in it. Gaps means so oh, in that case, it doesn't work. In this case, it doesn't work well. In this case, there is no uh, uh, good uh, return, etc. So that will help you understand that if the gaps are in relevant and useful to people, that's a good starting point for you to find a problem. The other way is, if you have a good uh, way to uh, 
uh, understand the current situation using disadvantages. Oh, in this case, the disadvantage is this. With this solution, Uber, disadvantage is, more, most of you think it's search pricing, it is not. The disadvantage is the, uh, the, uh, the availability of the phone, availability of the network is the reason that people cannot book an Uber cab without uh, uh, such networks. So there is a disadvantage. Ola has solved that. So you can take any current situation and go with the disadvantage that exists and the gaps in that, and then you will find a good problem, perhaps. Now, the other way is you can look at the present problems. You you can also look at the future problems. So what do you mean by future problem? Okay, let's understand this way. Today, we, for example, have a, a COVID situation and we have a problem with that, right? Contact, spreading, et cetera. Future problem means, must, some of you might have heard, there is a lot of work going on in the space of, for example, autonomous vehicle. Autonomous vehicle means there is no driver. Forget driver, there is no steering, there is no brake, there is no gear, there is nothing. So it is a, it's a chamber which moves by itself on its own intelligence. Now, that product does not exist today, but assume that we are successful in bringing those products. What, they will have new problems with that. What kind of problems? Suppose a, a autonomous vehicle is, is coming to pick you up. So because it's driverless, it's empty. It's coming to pick you up from your home because you have to go somewhere. It gets a tire puncture. What happens then? It's a new problem. It doesn't exist today. It can come in the future, right? So these are the new, ways that you can anticipate problems. So the difference is current problems are a little bit more easier to solve because you have information and, and, and you know, possibilities to test. But in the future problem, you will bet on a lot of assumptions and risks. So the risk is higher in the future ones, but perhaps the reward is also a little bit uh, better then. Now, the problem strength should be like this. What is the problem we should solve? So that is the first step. Why should we solve this problem? Remember, Remember the why and so what, this is that why. Okay, this is when you decide to solve a problem, not after the what, after the why. If you solve after the what, 90% of the 95% will fail here. The why is what those 5% which cross that. And then comes the how. This is the creativity part. Before this, it's all analytical part. This is the creativity part. And then with that, you come up with a solution, which will be an innovation, which is valuable, useful to whom, not to you who make it, but to the customer who is going to pay for it. So what is the problem is just a starting point. Why should we solve this problem? Should be the way to pick up good problems. And it's nine out of 10 times you get a good uh, uh, innovation from that. So in the kinds of skills that we talked about in the beginning of this session, complex problem solving, because the what itself is a complex problem solving. Today, if you go, apparently there are 158 reasons for headache. So if you go to a doctor with a symptom called headache, he has to, he or she has to sort out 158 reasons for it. So that's a very complex problem. So now if you take a car saying it's not switching on. I told you 60% of the car is software. Where do you start? So that is where complex problem solving skills come. When the why, that's where the critical thing skills come. It's where you have to threadbare, like, you know, separating the noodles in a Maggi, a bowl of Maggi. Then comes creativity. So don't start with the solution. Start with the problem analysis. Then and creativity, that's when the value which we talked about will come. So it's, if you see it's all fits in so uh, nicely and correctly as such, okay? Now there are certain traps that we have to overcome and be aware of in our journey. So one of them is wrong assumption. We make wrong assumptions. We talked, we saw the guy pushing the car. It was just a wrong assumption because that leads to wrong problems. So when you solve wrong problems, people, there are no bias. It will become a failed startup. So wrong assumptions is the root cause of it. But a lot a lot of things that you can do depends on you, right? And who you are. And Dr. Venkatesh talked about it, Dr. Preeti talked about it, Mr. Dhruv mentioned it. It is all about you. What do you want to do? I was speaking at an academy industry collaboration the other day. I said, today's era is not about teaching, it's about learning. So the, the, the chancellor was very happy. He said, you took the words of my mouth because that's the truth. When you're in engineering, when you're in a graduation, you're not being taught. You're, a, you're a, an adult who is going to learn. So what you learn is your call, okay? So first of all, this is a little exercise. I don't want any of you to use pen and paper. So I trust you that you will not use pen and paper. We, you need to know your thinking style. All of us have a thinking style. Thinking style is how, how do you process generally information? How do you generally think about when you get a new situation or a situation uh, that you need to uh, solve? So let me give you the problem. 
So remember, don't use pen and paper, do mental math. It's not a trick question. It's a very good question. If you answer sincerely, you'll get a good feedback on your thinking style, okay? A bat and a ball cost $110. A bat and a ball together cost $110. The bat costs 100 more than the ball. So $100, don't, don't worry, that's a it's not a trick question. $100, if you say 100 rupees, 100 rupees, I don't care. The bat costs 100 more than the ball. What does the ball cost? I want some of you to put your answers in the uh, uh, in the chat window. Let's see if I can see it. Or if uh, Ravi, if you can help. Yes, sir. I just opened the chat now. So just tell the answer. The bat and the ball together cost $110. Bat costs $100 more than the ball. Just want to see some, some answers. Uh, we have received one answer. Okay. Yeah. So we have received an answer from one of the uh, participants. Uh, she's saying it's 10. 10, okay. Yeah. Just everybody who has got 10, then just the, keep your, your, your yeah, mind there is, 10. The, there is another answer. It says uh, that uh, maybe the cost uh, ball will cost nothing without the bat. One is saying ball is $5, bat is $10, $100. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. It would actually it would have been a lot for a lot of fun if we were face to face, but this is what we have. So let's do with what we have. So request all of you who got 10, just write down 10 on your paper so that you know your answer is 10. All you got five, write down five. And the rest of you got other answers, you also write down your answer. This was a test created to understand how we think. If you answered five, you are the analytical type. So I'm, I'm guessing now, which usually is the case, those who got five would have said bat equals X, ball equals Y and put simultaneous equation and then got the answer. And they would have tested the answer, putting back in the equation whether it still fits, right? So that is the analytical type. That's how you process information. Those who got 10 are the intuitive type. So it's a one pass system. There is no feedback system. You, you hear something, you come, something comes out of your head. So these are the intuitive types. It's not about right or wrong. It's about knowing how you think. And those who did not get five or 10, I don't know what type you are because I don't know the answer that can be in between also, but perhaps you're in between these creative types as well. So the other one is this trap of seeing is believing. Not always. How many of you know what this device is? I'm pretty sure all of you know, especially in India, there's a mosquito repellent, you would say, but no, it need not be. So the whole idea is always, 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 be sure that not everything you see is a full thing. So hence, not everything you see is not to be believed fully as well. Okay, this is another trap, which also links to the wrong assumptions, right? right? Learn to question is a very important skill that we need to learn very early in our career and it'll do wonders for your career. What does it mean? I can ask a question like this. What is eight plus eight? Okay, of course, it's very easy. Primary maths, you will get 16. This is no big deal. But now as an innovator, you have to start thinking what all can add up to 16. Now, if you just think for a few seconds, you get infinite number of possibilities. 12 plus four, 10 plus six, eight plus eight, and it goes on. 8.5 plus 7.5, it, it, it is innumerable, right? That is how you become creative. And it's not something like Edward de Bono said, something that is God gifted. Maybe you can do it something faster, but it's definitely something that you can learn. There is creativity in analysis also. So I call it creative analysis. So how do you creatively analyze is by not assuming. Let me explain. Assume I have to go from point A to point B. So say from your university to airport, okay? I can take this orange route. I can talk, take a blue route. I can take a black route. I can take a green route. If I ask the question, which route should I take? Some of you will say, say orange, some of you will say blue, some of you will say black, some of you will say green. Now, the reason is none of them are right or wrong. Like I said in the beginning of innovation, it is about what is the variable. Let me explain to you. If I'm looking at time, I will take the fastest route. Okay. 
if I'm concerned about distance, I'll take the shortest route and fastest need not be shortest. Okay. If I'm worried about money, I'll take the most inexpensive route. Okay. Maybe no toll, etc. If I have taken somebody out of a hospital of a spine surgery, I will take the most comfortable route. The whole idea is you don't give a solution without knowing the problem. And that's what creative analysis is. That's what, if you see all of them tie back again, critical thinking, complex problem solving, assumptions, you know, how do you understand and analyze is very, 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 very important. Don't be in a hurry to give an answer. Speed is not at all the most important thing, right? Next thing is decision making. All of us differ in decision making, right? I will give you my own example. I used to travel a lot to Paris and it's a small town outside Paris called Brew. Uh, it will be like some few thousand people there and it's very quiet at seven o'clock in the night. So if I see a black man standing in an alley, maybe he's doing his own stuff, harmless. But my experience says, be careful. So all of us have these experiences, beliefs, culture, memory, and our own reasons to have some decisions in place. That's why they make 28 toothpaste, right? And not everybody buys only two kinds of toothpaste. There are people who will buy all over a toothpaste and there are people who will buy something else. But decision making is something you need to learn. Start making decisions every single day, five, 10, 50, 100 of them, small, small decisions. If my daughter comes and asks me, which color should she use to you know, color a book, a drawing that she's doing? I'll say, you, you tell me. She said, no, you tell me. I said, no, I will not make a decision for you. So inculcate that habit of deciding, right? Me, and the only thing is it may not be optimal. That's okay. But habit of those who can make decisions and you will only get better and better. It's like a cycling. The more you cycle, the better you get. So decision making is another skill that you need to develop. And it's also important to understand what all the things that you can do to do get better in innovation is observe. Seeing is not observing. Seeing is not at all observing because you are seeing Nothing is getting registered. Seeing is how it is done, what is done, why it is done, which hand they are holding, which leg they are lifting, are they leaning, are they smiling, are there hundreds of things you can see if you observe. Read. Read things which are not related to your topic. Read things which are not related to engineering. Read things which are not related to management if you are a management student. Read things which are actually unrelated. Read things about why FDI is important. Read why Brexit is not good or bad for Britain or for India. Read very different things. Survey, don't assume, make a survey. Oh, I think people love to have uh, noodles. No, no, do a survey, right? That will give you data, okay? And last but not least is experience yourself as much as you can. Not everything can be experienced, but many things can be experienced. If you want some, there was, a, there was a girl who wanted to solve the problem of wipers in front of a car, okay? She said, I want to solve the problem of uh, what happens when the, there is raining and there is wiper. I said, what is the problem? She couldn't explain. And very quickly, I figured out she doesn't even know how to drive. So how can she experience what happens when a person is diving in rain, right? So this is very important for you as well. The real world learning comes from this. Education, we all are lucky and thank God and thank our parents that we got good teachers and good university to study. With that, we'll become experienced. Once you pass out of college, you'll start to work somewhere and you'll get experience. But experience is a very loose thing sometimes. If both of us sit under a tree, for 10 years, 10 years later, both of us are 10 years experience. With what? Nothing, right? Then comes expertise, okay? For example, if I learn how to screw, uh, put a screw onto something, that is education. Then I do it for 10, 10 years. I'm 10 years experienced in how to fix screws. Now I become an expert. I can screw, fix screws the fastest in India. Still not enough. What you need is exposure. This is the 4E model, I call it. E, E, E. E and the fourth E is exposure. Exposure is I can fix screw in a, a, a mouse, in a computer, in a mixer grinder, in a fan, in a ship, in a in an aircraft. In a, so exposure is where do you get exposed? I told you it's all about you. You can sit cozy in a home, watch Netflix all day. You can get exposed to different things, right? So exposure is what makes you different, much more stronger than experience, right? And that's where this relevance of your exposure comes in. Patience, I think. As we come to the new generation, this is something that's dwindling. This video explains exactly what I want to tell about patients. Thank <laughs> you.
It's very clear, right? What he's trying to say. Certain things take time. You cannot do a good job every time in a uh, 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 hurry. It's not possible. It's simply not possible. And that's the, that's the reason many of the people don't analyze enough and they go into the solution space. And of course, they end up in the 95. Look at the picture. You will know what happens if you speed up everything. Right? So understand. And this another biggest trap that you need to get early in your career is understand the difference between lock and key. Yes, key is important to open a lock, but what is the lock opening to? Which door is it opening? Very important to understand. And that's a bigger trap for technology people, especially. Technology by itself is not valuable. Blockchain by itself is not valuable. IoT by itself is not valuable. Any artificial by itself is not valuable. If I use artificial intelligence to detect cancer much faster and better, that is useful. So benefits of technology is what you should focus on i can go to my mother and tell mom this is lithium polymer ion 3900 milliampere hour that's technology it has no value to her the benefit is you can charge once in three days that's the benefit and this is the biggest biggest problem in the 95 percent of the category that i saw they are not actually innovations they're just something you can do yeah you can do so many things in life but not everything you do can be really useful so be very clear whether you are convinced, whether it's your technology you're talking about or benefit. I hear a lot of students, I sit in a lot of pitches, they just feel using AI, IoT, ML is a cool thing to do. And just trust the other person who is sitting across is not an idiot. He can, he or she can easily see that there is no value of those technologies there. You have to understand your thinking should be ambidextrous, meaning we are overemphasizing logic, okay, compared to intuition. Logic takes you from one known to another known. Two things you have to know, smoke and fire. Then you can go wherever there is smoke, there is fire. Not necessary. In the winter, I can blow a hot air and then get smoke still. So that's that's the problem with logic. It has its own limitation. Intuition takes you from one known to another unknown. It's a new thing. Whether it's Archimedes principle, whether it's Newton's apple falling, everything has come through initially through intuition. Later, they proved it through experiments and then became more logical, right? So this is a very nice quote that I picked up and intuition doesn't tell you what you want to hear. It tells you what you need to hear if you listen to it, right? And that's what happens. So many people will tell many things. A rocket will never be able to leave the Earth's atmosphere. This is the power of logic, which we know how often we have broken this and how uh, still we are breaking this, this uh, statement into pieces, right? So logic has its limitations and intuition will always help you go beyond that. The last part, but not least is also something around what you as a person are in terms of risk. Don't be too safe. Don't be too safe. You know, it's very, very um, easy to be safe in this world. Everything should come to you in a, in a nice little way, but it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense if you think about it. Take your chances. You know, take your chances, not blind risk. These are called calculated risk, where you sort of understand what is at stake and how, you are analy how your uh, analysis is and how you're going to take risks as such. And you should be able to handle rejection. That is the one thing that I can guarantee when you're innovating. And it happened to me last week as well. It keeps happening to you all the time. This is a letter that I got from a professor, which was apparently written to Einstein from the University of Bern. In case you're not able to read it, I will read it for you. It was a letter written by University of Bern on uh, 1907, June 6th to Mr. Einstein. Dear Mr. Einstein, your application for the doctorate has not been successful at this time. And we, as such, you are not eligible for the position of associate professor. While you posted an interesting theory on your article published in uh, Analyn the Physic, we feel that your conclusion about the nature of light and the fundamental connection between space and time are somewhat radical. Overall, we find your assumption to be more artistic than actual physics, signed by Professor Wilhelm. So this can happen to the best of people. You have to hold on to your intuition. You have to hold on to your purpose. Because you're going to hold on to your belief as such, right? So this man on the screen, some of you may know, some of you may not know. He's one of my inspirations uh, for a long time. He was a farmer and he went to buy a Ferrari, right? And Ferrari insulted this guy. What do you want as a farmer? You're just a farmer. I don't want to sell Ferrari to you. Ferrari is a cool, uber cool product. 
So what does he do? He started Lamborghini. Today, Lamborghini is more valued than Ferrari. So sometimes rejection can be viewed so smartly, it becomes something else for you, right? But in all in all, you need to succeed at innovation. Don't forget to ask these two questions, why and so what, because this is your savior. You don't need anybody else if you understand these questions and if you answer them very, very convincingly. But most importantly, be in the moment. Always be live. And this video is what uh, tries to say that. Usually people miss it, so I'm playing one more time. So the, the guy has missed the opportunity, missed the point, but he's clapping and every no, but the most important point is this kid should know that he or she has missed an opportunity. We should know that we are not in the game. So be live and I'm sure you'll have a lot of success. That's what I wanted to share and uh, thank you. Thank you so much i'm on linkedin i have some couple of videos on tedx and stuff like that if you want to watch more it's difficult to cover everything we have different workshops and programs to cover a lot of details about this maybe we'll get an opportunity to do all that stuff so thank you so much uh, to all of you for uh, listening and thanks uh, for giving an opportunity to share so that's it from my side uh, ravi back to you thank you so much sir for your motivational words especially emphasizing the need of critical thinking the three C's, four E's, and emphasizing the need of consumer market, understanding the consumer wants and needs, and then modifying the startups accordingly. We are honored to have you here, sir. And now I request Mr. Ravi Kumar Tiwari to kindly felicitate our chief guest. It was wonderful, uh, Sudindra, and the wonderful video to create the ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Priti. And look forward to how many sessions and to be associated with Galgotias in the way of, you know, uh, mentor. So we'll discuss this offline. But uh, yeah, thank you so we'll much. I'll be we'll happy to work with you. Sure. Okay. Hello. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, there is some problem with like screen sharing with and my phone. Okay. Just so, so we wanted to present your e-momento. Just again, I'm no, trying. No yeah. Yes. So we'll share. We'll share on social media and on your mail also. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, so it is we'll Sudindra when you talked about you. Uh, innovation. Do not require technology as well. But <laughs> but sometimes you know technology. In fact, sometimes technology creates hurdles than the you know to become uh, support. Right. That's so, the right word. Create a hurdle. <laughs> So sorry, but then we really um, uh, acknowledge and appreciate your presence. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Your interaction with the participants was very interactive, entertaining. And I hope all of them have been motivated enough to lead the path of entrepreneurship and innovation. Dear participants, we now move towards our session of the event entitled Using Technology for Rural Innovation and Harnessing Power for Rural India. For this session, we have with us Mr. Srinivas Chamarti, MD at Slime Automation Systems Private Limited, as our speaker. Mr. Chamarti is an Chief Innovation Executive and MD at Chime Automation Systems, and he is on a relentless mission of a journey to, self to realize self-touring country on a two-wheeler to promote the idea of innovation for a self-reliant India. He has been actively featured by the Hindu and AICTE India for extended support for his mission of journey to se realize self. I request you, sir, to kindly address our participants. Yeah, thank you very much, first of all, Ravi and uh, uh, Vinny Sharma for uh, uh, simple and brief introduction about me. 
uh, today uh, it's good that you know i'm talking to young minds on uh, uh, how we can build rural india which is my primary uh, goal of my life and uh, Mrs. Bajaj, uh, nice uh, listening to you right from the you know start of the conference. Uh, with, without taking without taking much time, I would like to go into the presentation uh, in a faster mode so that you know we can cover some of the things and uh, you know uh, we will be able to uh, you know address uh, the students. And uh, friends, uh, let's start our presentation, uh, which is uh, more of uh interaction than really a one-sided presentation i'm just sharing my screen on uh, you know uh, uh this uh, presentation hope uh, you all of you are able to see the screen now uh, yes sir we are able to see your screen so uh, importantly uh, what i would like to uh, tell you first of all is uh, when ravi was talking to me uh, he said shrinivas you have already traveled all over the nation and uh, rural innovation is the topic which I want you to talk because most of the students in this part of the country come from UP, Bihar and uh, Haryana and uh, these places where there is a lot of farming and a lot of uh, you know rural uh, uh, strength and uh, rural intelligence with the kind of uh, environment they have grown up. So I said, okay, that's a very good topic. So today I would like to talk in brief because the time is very restricted and uh, we'll talk about in brief, I'll give you some small tips, some important uh, methods of, uh, you know, observations from rural innovation and how we can build it. My talk is going to be very simple for the children, right? So this is the topic and uh, yeah, about the presenter, I would like to tell you that, uh, you know, uh, a journey to realize self uh, was started by me in uh, 1999, 22 years ago. But formally took a shape in 2015. The mission is uh, empowering minds through Think India, Work India, Make in India, Grow India, and Build India. In the past five years, I have traveled about 1,42,567 kilometers, 317 lectures, and 435 interactions with students, professionals, and industries on Make in India and continuing. Before we uh, go into the presentation, I want you to see a three minute video on. Uh, on uh, the work without uh, why I'm talking about rural India, which will make you understand why this topic is essential. I'm just clicking the link so that you can uh, see I'm trying it online. So uh, hope uh, you know, uh, you're able to uh, see the screen now, or the video screen. Hope all of, all of you are able to see the uh, video screen here. Uh, I think uh, there's a problem with that. But anyway, we'll just go into the details. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll tell you why we are talking about rural India. The next page shows the number of places I have traveled in India, uh, exploring India and uh, working on this mission. As you can see that, uh, you know, uh, I have traveled almost all parts of our nation, traveling where villages, understanding and uh, giving talks to young students on how we can build ourselves and how we can build India. So till now, uh, 1,42,597 kilometers. And let me tell you one more important point. Uh, uh, I have never traveled abroad and I have restricted all my uh, travel only to India and I have explored every part of this nation on how, how beautiful we are on three angles, on the economic front, on the technical front, and on the social front. I focused all of my uh, life. I have been traveling in India from past 22 years, uh, that too alone, uh, and living in villages and trying to understand uh, our country directly through my eyes. I, I have uh, hardly read uh, any magazines about India, but I have been uh, traveling uh, only to see our beautiful country with our eyes and met people from across the uh, you know, country across the nation from, you can see the last place I'm pointing the most from, this is a place called Lungla in Mizoram to, you know, Srinagar. Of course, I have traveled Ladakh, but I have not given any talks in Ladakh. So these are the places I have given talks and interactions still now. So this is the reason why I'm interested to talk on rural India and uh, innovation. So uh, as uh, uh, Vinny, Mrs. Uh, Vinny, Ms. Vinny was telling, you know, AICT has supported my mission uh, uh, to connect to colleges from 2019. I am thankful to AACT. And uh, 
today's topic you know as i told it is a very very brief interactions because uh, i i have uh, heard in the starting session of the inauguration that we are talking to first year students so the moment i heard uh, initially my presentation was about 56 slides with all the details now the moment i heard they are first year students i have brought them to eight slides reason is that you know i don't want to over uh, burden them with the information so let's talk about the preamble preamble means children what we are going to discuss and what we are going to learn from this particular discussion again i'm trying to say this is not a talk or this is not a presentation this is more of a discussion so you on the chat you can keep on asking me some questions and i would be interested to answer that and uh, first the preamble is india's strength is rural india even today you know we we our country is strong based on the rural india for agriculture and so many other requirements now efficient resources and people there are beautiful resources in rural india and there are excellent minds and creative minds and creative people in rural india and those resources how we can use problem for us how to use the people and build the process for innovation it is more important to state here that everyone uh, assumes that innovation happens only in cities it's not so we can as well build products and we can build industries in rural india and innovation can happen in a very formalized product in rural india also now uh, what is self reliance this is one more important point which i want to talk and basic domains we can work on this is an important things see finally we are going to be engineers and uh, what are the basic domains we can work on this we have to understand everyone talks about innovation but where we should do innovation what kind of problem should be solved how we can apply innovation these are important points to be discussed limitations and mindset and social angle this is also one point which we will be trying to understand in this particular discussion and what action plan can we take this is broadly the context in which we are going to uh, do this uh, small uh, interaction so why my motivation to uh, speak here as i told you in the map traveling length and breadth of india i realized that inbuilt talents in rural india are very creative and uh, we can nurture those talents that's the reason primarily i am sitting here classifying my talks into four sectors see whenever i have traveled across the nation i have traveled i have classified my talks into four sectors rural near urban urban and allied and i and uh, very honestly i am amazed with the basic creativity you know of the people of rural areas in life skills basic thinking and passionate minds the difference between uh, people working in uh, urban areas and elite uh, areas elite cities elite means uh, metro cities and uh, urban means uh, tier 2 cities and uh, near urban means uh, around uh, uh, town uh, town based uh, you know cities and rural is the real village economy i have uh, while interacting with lot of youngsters and uh, professionals in rural area i mean what i understood is they have basic life skills that means their common sense their iq in applying on something is very very good now we have basic thinking because in rural areas we come across so many uh, problems which we see because we are living in a real environment and unlike urban or allied uh, cities you know uh, where we have lot of uh, facilities from uh, communication to transportation to you know knowledge resources to many things you know uh, we come across so many issues in the uh, basic uh, you know problem so basic thinking uh, becomes very strong in rural areas and passionate minds especially in rural and near urban uh, areas when i was giving a talk i have understood or come across lot of passionate minds who are actually uh, you know interested to do something in their life and moreover i started my education career and passion from rural india most of us in this conference also would have been from rural india only hence i am aware of the eagerness of students uh, what they want to do in their life so hence uh, i am trying to uh, you know speak here in that particular sense now what are all the opportunities we have see when we say rural innovation rural innovation and technology very important point we will try to classify what is meant by rural innovation in normally in rural innovation uh, these are the basic uh, problems we come across which we can turn as opportunities 
agriculture and harvesting even today most of the methods of agriculture and harvesting are manual and uh, sanitation and health is second problem criteria disease and treatment is another criteria reliable reliable transportation and electrical vehicles see in village transportation or nearby village transportation you know uh, we are using uh, you know uh, combustion engines but we can use uh, uh, electrical vehicles for reliable transportation and construction low cost important this is very good problem which can uh, modify a lot in uh, rural innovation and technology for the civil engineers especially we should come across uh, with a kind of material and uh, kind of environment where the construction is uh, reliable and at the same time low cost and uh, there is a big scope of construction because even today the rural india is uh, living in thatched houses or uh, you know very a uh, very uh, delicate infrastructure for their basic living so we can we can come up some uh, with some innovation where there is a low cost construction material and low cost construction uh, methodologies so that we can build homes faster at the same time build reliable homes energy generation and management of course most of india is electrified uh, today but even today there are villages which are not electrified so energy generation from wind and solar can be a important method again i am trying to say as my colleague uh, mr sudindra said you know innovation need not have to be creating something altogether new innovation can be a method of implementation on how the existing technology can be implemented that's a very good point what mr sudindra uh, kaushik was uh, actually telling and manufacturing hubs and innovation see manufacturing is an important part which is taking a big leap in india now during the pandemic and there is a lot of innovation that can be done in manufacturing so we need to have a lot of manufacturing hubs and it is very innocent to think that all the manufacturing or energy generation or construction or all these problems whatever i have stated above uh, can happen only in urban and uh, elite areas they have to start from uh, villages also and jobs and entrepreneurship finally all we study is to earn and live and work and build so we need jobs at the same time we also need entrepreneurs and what kind of students uh, can become entrepreneurs and what kind of jobs we can take see if you see rural environment these are the important points which are needed to be addressed and a lot of innovation is required in all these problems see finally when we say innovation innovation uh, it's not about how you use intelligence like uh, Uh, mr sujinder already covered you know innovation is how we find out a workable solution to your problem and how we can implement it so we need to understand uh, workable solution to your problem and we say we should understand what is the problem first and uh, these are the problems whatever i have listed are still not totally addressed in india and we have to address it stage by stage recently i came across you know in hyderabad itself nearby my house you know two sanitation workers uh, you know uh, have died because of uh, you know uh, improper uh, management of getting down into the manhole of sanitation and clearing up so we need to make some equipment which can automate this kind of you know problems and uh, these are the problem criteria what i define and there are a lot of opportunities if you take agriculture we have uh, right from uh, agricultural plowing tools to the harvesting tools to the refinement tools or food processing tools we need a lot of innovations and uh, we need to do a lot of homework on uh, such kind of problems sanitation and health even today uh, you know there should be a primary health center uh, in at least in every taluka of uh, india and we don't have primary health centers and uh, you know uh, uh, there is a rural health itself is a great problem today and we need to address that and like that disease and treatment see most of the diseases which, which are diagnosed in rural areas are basically uh, uh, from uh, you know at a very later stage initially the disease is not diagnosed and if we are able to diagnose uh, the diseases with the proper diagnostic and early diagnostic equipment which are uh, minimum equipments probably treatment can be better so there are so many challenges in each and every problem criteria i have mentioned and students most of us are from villages so rural innovation covering these problems are very very essential to be addressed let us come uh, to the uh, you know uh, let us come to the details of uh, you know points to be discussed 
the points are what are the opportunities we have resources people material and methods jugad versus organized development mindset a drift in perception innovation in manufacturing technology is important for innovation the goals and action plans and gaps and limitations points i want to discuss on uh, this particular uh, you know webinar are uh, this as i told you in the uh, previous slide we have so many problems which have to be addressed in uh, rural innovation and those are opportunities the moment we try to let us say uh, i'll tell you a very classic example of uh, trying to use an automated equipment or simple tools for plowing which can uh, reduce the laborious job of the farmer as well as the cattle who are plowing so we can we these problem can be addressed by actually creating uh, implements in the plowing tools which are possible uh, you know innovations that can happen so these problems whatever i have mentioned here have to be uh, addressed through uh, you know uh, converting them with opportunities of innovation for example uh, sanitation and health when i say in sanitation we can we can use uh, uh you know uh, robotic equipment to clean up the sanitation uh, sanitation or sewerage pipelines and in health we can create a telemedicine equipment which has the basic vital parameters like uh, uh, single ed ecg spo2 then uh, digital stethoscope uh, thermometer and uh, a small camera for interacting with the doctor so problem criteria when i mentioned there are so many opportunities which exist and uh, we have to uh, you know find opportunities in each and every problem criteria what we have now what is more important is resources let me tell you students uh, in india today we have about 4700 engineering colleges in uh, in india that means about 26 lakh engineers are produced in india every year i am telling produced because instead of being mentored they are produced that means uh, you a student is put into an engineering college and he has to come out with uh, you know uh, a degree and he has to get into a job so the number of people who are coming out of engineering colleges are plenty in number in india sometimes i am worried in another 20 years if you say 26 lakhs every year into 20 years is uh, you know 4 crores so approximately so there will be 4 crores already we have crore at least 3 crores of engineering students available in this country so it is important that the resources coming out of engineering uh, colleges which who are the people have to be effective and uh, they have to use the problem criteria to build up opportunities and mentor themselves and work so resources people is the most cri important criteria and we have lot of people to work on we have lot of problems but what is uh, lacking is the method to evolve at a solution for the problems which are existing we material and methods important point uh, is in resources uh, other than people material and methods are also very very important material when i say to do an innovation you need uh, the basic material and uh, you need to source the material you need to understand where you find the material so this needs lot amount of homework on identifying the resources i want to build uh, let us say a telemedicine equipment in a rural village now when i say telemedicine equipment i need to have a stethoscope i need to have a spo2 i need to have a thermometer i need to have a digital device i need to have uh, you know uh, a communication system i need to have an interactive uh, platform i need to have a single ed ecg at least so this is called material we have people from the colleges and there are so many rural engineering colleges and one more important point i would like to tell you is in my mission of traveling across the country i have spent lot of my time at least 40% of my time in uh, uh, you know rural engineering colleges and rural areas because those are the places where uh, people have to reach and uh, transfer their experience and uh, knowledge and problems and failures because we need to share our experience and knowledge in allied colleges anyway they have lot of resources to do it but if we do it in rural engineering colleges and rural areas then the people there with the already existing passion they have they get motivated so when i talk about resources people material and methods so material talks about when i have a problem what kind of material is required to resolve a particular problem so material is an essential part in the resources and methods what kind of methods should i have to implement for example uh, 
if i have an innovative idea to uh, let us say for example i am trying to address uh, you know uh, remote health monitoring or uh, you know uh, telemedicine what is the method i implement is it that i develop the smaller products and then integrate which will take a lot of time or i start using the existing products build the platform and then start developing individual products method is the criteria which will determine how fast you are successful when you are implementing a, a particular uh, solution so method is an essential part so people we have a lot of people material is the kind of equipment the kind of uh, tools we need and method is the criteria with which i use people and material to come to your solution resources and these three important points are very very essential when we need to do rural innovation and uh, jugad versus organized development jugad is a very very favorite word for a lot of people and uh, jugad most of the villagers when they have a problem they do a jugad very good i mean uh, when you say uh, jugad a jugad means uh, you know an immediate solution to your problem by fixing it with you know auxiliary methods of implementation what what i say is auxiliary is you fix it with whatever is temporary so that's an auxiliary method jugads work but jugads are specific to your application and jugads does not sustain sometimes we need to have sustainable organized development and uh, jugad when you formalize it it becomes an organized development so when we have an application of building a product for rural innovation so for solving a problem and give a solution along with people materials and methods we need to have organized development there is a difference between jugad and organized development in jugad i need not have to go through a formal process of development whereas in organized development i need to approach i need to approach a formal process what do you mean by a formal process a formal process means i have a problem i define the criteria i choose the method i choose the material i choose a capability list and from that i evolve to a solution so a very planned activity is organized development jugad solves problems for immediate requirements organized development solves problems with suitable solutions for a sustainable development rural innovation has got a lot of jugads now especially when i went to punjab you know i have traveled to punjab and a lot of jugads they used to say we we even farmers even the students of farmers you know there are 278 uh, engineering colleges in uh, uh, punjab under gurunanak dev university and i am board of studies members for uh, member for uh, gurunanak dev university and when i was interacting with the students in the rural background they used to say sir for every problem we have a jugad it's very good appreciable but jugad is an immediate solution for a problem and uh, my dear friends youngsters we have to go for an organized development and this is very essential in rural innovation see we have to build our villages see from gandhi to you know vinoba bhave and so many other people including pv narasimha rao our previous prime minister and uh, our previous prime minister mr uh, sri vajpay everyone focused on villages but our we as engineers we are focusing more on getting jobs in urban areas and having comfortable lifestyle and uh, we, we i believe that we need to work more on rural innovation with an organized development methodology okay jugad is good but organized development will give you sustainable solutions and uh, platforms mindset a drift in perception about uh, 20 years ago uh, it is very clear that uh, you know everyone used to migrate to cities and there was no connectivity resources were available only in cities or urban areas and they used to find a job but today it is not like that especially the pandemic has very clearly stated that it is not necessary uh, for you to be in an urban area to uh, work on a problem or solve a problem most of the it companies when they said we are closing down and work from home is ordered you know uh, most of the employees went to their own villages and they started working from their villages what does that mean it means that if we have the mindset to work from the village then definitely we can uh, work from the village and uh, th- now because of uh, advancement in technology in communication especially even in uh, you know uh, material shipment or supply chain management what do you mean by supply chain management as i told you in resources you need to have material when you want a material you should get it on time 
Even getting materials in most of the villages today is not a problem because of the network that is connected across the country. So there is mindset, a drift in perception is required. You need not have to uh, work only in city if you have to develop or build a product. Of course, I stay in Hyderabad, but 170 days I stay in villages in my in a year in uh, my travels. So 170 days in a year is like, you know, I'm trying to spend most of my time in villages and trying to understand. So mindset, a drift in perception. This is very, very important point. You need not have to be only at a localized uh, urban area to do some innovation. You can do it from your rural place. What, of course, the urban areas and light areas do have some additional resources, but because of the online uh, importance and the online uh, methodology of trying to learn things, they, a drift is required. And innovation in manufacturing. If you see, I will tell you about, uh, I started traveling in India from 1999, and uh, I mean, when I was 19 years old. Okay, I started traveling in India from the time I was 19 years old. And uh, in the past 22 years, I have seen previously in villages, where if you take uh, uh, any manufacturing, it used to happen indigenously. Uh, baskets uh, from bamboo uh, you know, extracts or uh, cobbler equipments or uh, tools, implements for agriculture, they used to happen in nearby villages. So innovation in manufacturing is required. What do you mean by innovation in manufacturing? There are standard practices. When I said Jugad versus organized development, you know, we have to have innovation in manufacturing. Once you develop a product or an implement or a tool that, uh, that can be used in your village, you need to have uh, a manufacturing setup because you never manufacture to, uh, like my colleague, Mr. Sudhindra Kaushik said, you never manufacture to keep your innovation in a museum. You manufacture, you make your innovation uh, to put it to use. And to be useful, you need to manufacture it. So innovation in manufacturing, see how well I can manufacture at low cost, how well I can manufacture with high reliability, how well I can manufacture with the available resources. Innovation in manufacturing is also a very, very important thing. And if you go to, uh, it's not that you know innovation in rural India is not developing. If you go to Maharashtra, if you go to Punjab, if you go to a little of uh, Haryana and uh, Uttar Pradesh, there are industries who are uh, prospering, uh, which are pr uh, prospering in rural areas. So, but innovation in manufacturing is required. No, no question of trying to have centralized manufacturing. We can have decentralized method of development and manufacturing. I believe it. So, technology is important for innovation is also important. Technologies means not uh, C++ or uh, Java or hardware implementation. Technologies means the mobilization resources and uh, the tools that can improve our innovation at rural background. For example, I already mentioned, you have a lot of digital network, you have transportation uh, facility, the supply chain management, logistics are developed. What do you mean by logistics? Logistics means uh, the material and uh, uh, people management costs that can be addressed uh, for building a solution. So technology is important for innovation is uh, the tools, implements and logistics and the communication. Very, very important. And today technology is so good that if you want to sell your product, you need not have to do any physical uh, marketing of it. You have a digital marketing platforms like India Mart, Just Dial, uh, Alibaba or Amazon or Flipkart. You have a lot of uh, digital platform tools where you can sell uh, you know, uh, your products. And these technology platforms will integ are integrating all the nation for efficient supply chain management. Supply chain management means uh, there is a requirement. There is a requirement of a product. You have an innovation. And with that innovation, you have developed a product. And this product, there is a demand. And this demand is supplied. So supply chain means from the need to the development to reaching the product to the end user, this whole chain is called supply chain. And uh, the technologies that are important for, in the, for innovation are already existing, but it has to be enhanced more. We talk about uh, digital uh, cities and uh, digital villages. It is 10-20% uh, uh, realized and most of it uh, is in a uh, virtual platform, but we as engineers, when we start working on uh, innovations from decentralized location uh, from our village, then we'll be able to do much better. 
I have one student in Uttar Pradesh uh, who is actually working on innovation from his village near Gorakhpur. I'm happy that he remained. He's, he's an output of NIT and he's still working there. And uh, it is very much possible that we can build innovation and products from our you know, uh, villages, and which are useful for villages again. Now, the goals and action plans. Uh, uh, everyone talks of innovation. Everyone talks of uh, creativity. Everyone talks of resources. But what is the kind of goal we want, which is very important? See, goals are the methods with which we convert our ideas into actions and implementable uh, solutions. And for that solutions, we need to have action plans. First of all, students, you are in first year engineering. I request you should form a very good, very reasonably practical goal. What do you mean by a goal? A goal is a method of converting your intellect into a workable solution through a proper action plan. You need to have a goal. If you are from a village, if you are from a village and uh, from childhood, you have seen a lot of problems. See, uh, I was asked many times, why have you traveled so many lakhs of kilometers in India? I very clearly say I am from a village and I have seen so many problems uh, in my village when I was a child. Hello? Yeah. Srinivas, sir. Yeah. So we need to wrap up. We are running short of time. So we need to yeah. start panel discussion. We can cover uh, if anything is left. You can uh, speak Another three to slides. discussion. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, Srinivas, just conclude uh, after three slides because you know uh, the uh, we have a panel discussion where yes. we are right, and we would like to be associated with you. Uh, no problem. We'll talk which you are doing. Thank you. No, no problem. Allow me to complete three slides. So yes, yes. the goals and action plans are very required and gaps and limitations. We need to address the gaps and also the limitations. These are the points for discussions. And the mind, the mindset and opportunities. Establish a vision to build technology and core engineering requirements. Don't run only behind IT. Develop products or solve problems with measurable process and outputs. Our output should be measurable. Now, assure and confirm process to develop the products. We need to have a proper process. Improve the sourcing and ordering process. This very important. Now, identify as many resources as possible who started industries with the domain expertise as a background. This is also very important. Now, create reliable and sustainable work model and order flow. This is also very, very important. Now, what are all the challenges? Being practical is a challenge. Now, funding is a challenge. Activity management and coordination of academia with work requirements, identifying human resources from institutions is a challenge. Banks, the most confusing and turbulent mechanism. I have an innovation and I want to implement it. I have a problem of, uh, you know, uh, uh, supporting it. Psychological limitations. Working from your base is a psychological limitations. People are always interested to migrate to cities. Proper skill in youth is a challenge. We don't focus on building our skill. And ineffective technical education system, that is also there. We are only studying theoretically, not uh, practically. And uh, one more challenge is teamwork. We are lacking a lot of teamwork and we need to work as teams. Don't try for individual success. It is not going to work. Now, strengthen rural innovation, build nation through decentralized work methods, start working from village. And uh, this is my mission. You can transfer, you can search in uh, uh, Facebook or, uh, you know, uh, YouTube. We have a lot of platforms wherein, you know, uh, I can tell you this is a Facebook where, uh, you know, uh, I have addressed lakhs of students till now, and uh, let us work to uh, build our, uh, you know, uh, students and young minds. This is the focus what I have, and let us work uh, to grow ourselves. Let us uh, a journey to realize self. I named it like that because uh, if I don't realize myself, I can't realize uh, any potential in me, and I cannot work, you know, to build products. Self Reliance India means I should first be self reliant for myself. Then only we can do anything. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Anyway, my presentation has to start at 11.15. It started at uh, 5 to 12. And in 15 minutes, I was asked to close. And thank you very much uh, uh, for this opportunity. And uh, nice of you that you know we discussed. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much for sticking to the time limit. We know that it's uh, hard once uh, an interactive speaker like you interact with the newcomers of our university. Thank you so much for sharing the knowledge with us and the experience and motivating our students to go forward. Uh, now, dear participants, we are moving on towards our first panel discuss discussion. Our panel discussion is based 